today we're going to be talking about traversing GraphQL with ease with Ariadne, which is a Python framework for GraphQL. Uh, just really quickly about myself. So uh, I'm originally from Italy. I've been in the Bay Area since 2015. And since 2016, in one way or the other, I've had to do with this meetup uh, with SF Python and with PyBay. Uh, most of you I probably know in person, other of you I know virtually. It's incredibly good to be at this meetup. Um, as a day-to-day -day job, I work as a tech lead at ZeroX. And uh, in my past time, I speak at some conferences and I mentor students. So uh, today we're going to be learning what GraphQL is, but we're gonna be learning GraphQL by example. So uh, my goal is not to dive deep, but it is to use the magic of Python to quickly cover some of the most core concepts of GraphQL. So we're going to be building a small crypto pricing app, cryptocurrencies. You've probably heard about them in the last couple of months. And the, the, again, the goal is to give you a taste of what GraphQL is and you know, just cover some of the core concepts, which are specifically querying and schemas. Most importantly, we're not going to make things, uh, you know, we're, we're going to make things really simple and understandable. So we're not going to bias over optimizations. The main goal is to learn and not to scale. Very quickly, what is GraphQL? So it's a replacement for REST. That is pretty much like the first thing you, you hear about GraphQL. The biggest difference is that GraphQL servers use a schema to describe the shape and the dimensionality of your data. And um, the, what, what is this, this schema? It's a strongly typed schema uh, that pretty much encourages clients to explore data compared to a REST API that you could imagine that is heavily dependent on documentation, right? In terms of you know, what endpoints you have to hit, what parameters you input, and what type of data comes out of your output. GraphQL query language is also very expressive. So it allows clients to request lots of data with one single query instead of having to do many different queries. So that's also a huge difference compared to REST. And uh, last point, GraphQL is, is more than just a protocol. Um, all GraphQL servers, no matter what programming language you use, have a opinionated pattern on how to resolve the queries that are coming in, right? And this pattern, we're gonna look at it it's called resolvers. Let's take a look at some perfectly valid GraphQL schema for a Star Wars backend. The first thing we see here is this enum definition. You can think of enums pretty much like you would have in Rust or in C or in Go or even in Python. This enum here has three different types for episode. Then we have a character type here. And a character type is, you know, you could think of it as a dictionary or uh, in, in Python or a class or a struct. Effectively, it is a type which has different fields and those fields have a predefined um, you know, valued type associated with them. So in this case, we have a character which has a name, which is a string. And then there is another field called appears in which returns a list of episodes. And you may be wondering what is that exclamation mark everywhere that is GraphQL's way of saying, this field needs to return a property. Then finally, every GraphQL application has a main entry point. Just think of this as like your root query handler, right? This, this query type is, is different from the character type that you have above because it defines the entry point to your application. So in this case, there is one uh, entry, which is th there's one uh, function handler attached to it, which is called hero that accepts a object and returns a character type. So what does a GraphQL request and response look like? So we're taking the same schema that we saw before, right? Let's actually make that query. This is what a query looks like here. So we're calling the hero function here, right? We're querying for the hero. And then that hero, remember, returns a character, and then we're extracting the name from that character. So let's run that query for a GraphQL server. Let's look at the output. This is what the output looks. As you can see it, it's, it's, it's effectively keeping the same structure, 
to that query, but it's populating the response. How does it work? So I mentioned this before, GraphQL requests are resolved through these components called, called um, resolvers. Resolvers are, are essentially function handlers or like, you know, query handlers. They, um, you know, they're like a function in, you know, whatever programming language you're working with that, uh, you know, accept in, an input with one or more parameters and return an output. So in this particular example here, we were running the GraphQL server resolves two, two resolvers. The first resolver handles the hero function, takes as an input the episode, right? And returns a valid character object, right? And that character object, again, could be represented internally in Python with like a dictionary. And the second resolver, right, takes that character object and extracts the name and returns it, right? In this example, we would definitely have to write the hero resolver, right? Because that is pretty much some custom logic. So we'd have to write some kind of Python function that returns a dictionary that looks like a character. However, as long as the character dictionary that we returned has a name key, we don't need to define the second resolver. It actually comes for free. GraphQL resolvers have a default resolver, right? And this resolver effectively tells us that as long as the object that you're returning, as long as that dictionary has a field that you're trying to, to select in your query, it's just going to return that field. So it's pretty much getting it for free. And with Python, this just looks really, really easy and pretty. So I'm just gonna take a step here and I'm going to do pretty much like, like Joshua, we're gonna do a little demo. Okay, so here we have on the left side here, we have some code here we have for our web, our web framework here. I have a live web framework running, okay? These first things here are, let's like a quick import for the Ariadne web framework. Again, we're just really gonna focus on learning by example here. So what's gonna matter is the schema. Let's take a look at the schema here, right? We're gonna build a quick crypto pricing app. Three things defined here. The first thing is an enum token symbol, right? We're gonna define free token symbols. Then we're gonna have a type defined token with these free properties on it. And then we're gonna have our main entry point, which is that query type, which we you know pretty well, right? So what we're gonna do now, okay, is uh, what we have on the right here, I'm just gonna minimize this pretty quickly, is we actually have this GraphQL playground. So GraphQL has a, most of you may know like Postman app, right? Where you can, you know, it's kind of like a UI where you can make REST requests here. Well, GraphQL comes with this built in right? It's actually pretty nice. You can uh, make requests here and you can press the play button. It's just going to run for the server. Any change that I make on this file, by the way, it's going to pretty much reload. So let's just make sure that things are working here. Okay. For now we have like an empty type here, right? For query, let's just quickly define a hello field. Okay. And this hello field is just going to return a, a string here. Okay. Let's go ahead here. Okay. I just want to make sure that, yeah, okay. It's reloading. So if we run this here now, okay, something, of course, great. Live demo, wonderful. Uh, here we are. Okay, yeah, of course, I just crashed the server. Let's run it again. As you can see here, right, it's trying to fetch the hello field, right, but there's no resolver associated with it, so it cannot do that. So let's quickly use this Ariadne framework to define a resolver here. I'm just gonna create a function here, and then I'm gonna tell you how it's all connected, okay? I'm just gonna say it's called handle hello, right? And it's going to have some args here, but we don't really matter about that. And again, you know, we know that this needs to return a string, right? Because the hello field needs to return a string. So let's just return the string world, right? And let's take the query object here that we've defined. This is like the, the you know, you can use this object to register resolvers on this. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly say, I'm going to register the field hello, right? And it's going to call this function. And then off we go, pretty quickly, pretty easy, okay? Why don't we take it a step further, okay? Let's return a tokens. Let's create a new entry for tokens, right? And again, this is going to return a list of tokens. And again, this syntax may be a little bit confusing. This is gonna return a list of tokens, right? And while this is GraphQL schema, we can return tokens in a Pythonic way. So we're gonna return a list of dictionaries. 
I already have that right here. Let's go ahead and take that. All right, here we are. By the way, this this code is all going to be available to you so that, uh, you know, and I'm also going to be available to, for any questions. Okay, here, so again, we have created this token field here, right? Sorry, this tokens, tokens field here, okay? And so what we can do here is we can access now this tokens field, as you can see it auto completes. That's the beauty of GraphQL here. And remember the tokens, the token scheme is going to return a list of tokens. So we have to actually select a field on that list. And we're just going to get the name for now, right? And as you can see here, right, we're actually already getting our name. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty much like writing Python code. However, let's take a look here. Okay, I defined a price object, a, a price field here that I'm actually not returning in my data, right? And so what the system is saying is, you know, the price cannot be nullable, right? But at the same time, there is no way to resolve it. And so it's going to return an error, right? So what we need to do now is we need to create a new resolver, but for the token type, right? So you can create a resolver for any single type that you have in the system here. So how do you create a new resolver, okay? So the first thing you wanna do here, right, is you want to, just like you created your, your query object, right, you can create your token object here. And then when you start your web server, you just put it in the list of resolvers here, right? So now we're registering this token object here, right? So now any, any field that is gonna be resolved on the token type is going to be uh, run through any decorator that is the token type, right? And then what we can do, okay, pretty quickly is I just wrote a very, very small amount of code. Again, this is the great thing about this Ariadne framework. It's incredibly easy to, to, to write code that does, you know, very complicated things here. So again, here, I just wrote a, a decorator here, right? For a, a resolver for the price function here, right? So here we're going to actually, you know, again, this is going to be called for every object in the array, right? And so what we're going to do is we're just going to extract the symbol in that object, right? But just a reminder, right, the symbol is pretty much, you know, the data that we're passing here, right? So this, this object here for every object is going to call this function. And then the great thing about Ariadne is as long as you prefix the function with a sync, so you, you get a sync out of the box. So I just uh, created this function, get ticker for token. It's just gonna call uh, Coinbase, which is a exchange to get the rate for that token in dollars and just return the price. All right, we're gonna save this and then we're gonna run it. And here we go, we have the price. Again, it's incredibly easy to uh, use uh, Ariadne. And you know, we, we have like a working app, right? with a very, very few lines of code. And that's the incredibly nice thing about it. Um, so that brings me, Matt, again, this was like a very small demo, but again, the whole idea is just to show you how easy it is to uh, work with GraphQL with Ariadne. So uh, now is probably a good time to get back to our slides actually, because I have a couple more things I wanna ask you. So, oops, don't know what happened there. All right, uh, I hope you can see the screen. If not, I hope Grace can let me know. Um, what's great about GraphQL? So, um, you know, again, I love the strongly typed schema that is defined. And I love the fact that, you know, as you saw on the right, you have auto completion schema validation, right? This makes it really, really easy to request a lot of data pretty quickly. And it solves quite a, a few well documented problems, such as underfetching, overfetching, and the n plus one query problem, which you can search. Um, I also want to ask the audience, you know, like, please don't be shy. Raise your hand on Remo. At the bottom of a the screen, there is a raise hand feature if you want to chat. Um, please tell me, like, what is your favorite GraphQL feature if you do have one? Uh, alternatively, if you want to write your question in Q&A, there is also a space to do that on the right box. Uh, but, you know, again, I'm pretty new to GraphQL and because of Ariadne, I was just kind of like ramped up on it pretty quickly. But I just really want to hear, like, what is your favorite feature? Those are a couple things that I dislike about GraphQL, right? So again, um, 
you know, if you work, if you work on like systems that have to scale, there's definitely like a huge concern with having a client that can query like any resource you want and any relationship you want. Uh, usually, um, you know, the actual servers themselves are constrained in some way. And, you know, giving a client like, you know, creative freedom to like search any kind of data could be like, you know, pretty resource intensive. So uh, it can be complicated to fetch nested resources, but, you know, maybe there's something I don't know that, you know, uh, any, someone in the audience knows and can point out to me. And then the other thing is obviously caching, right? So, you know, before you could do caching at like a, you know, protocol level, or you, you could cache the response um, from a server. Um, and you could use, you know, like, you know, like HTTP tags or something to, you know, like cache that response. And now, right, the caching cannot, that has to be like moved to the application level, right? Because, you know, a query could be pretty complicated and sophisticated. Um, and yeah, like, again, I'm just trying to ask people, you know, if you have experience scaling GraphQL app, uh, GraphQL apps, I'd really love to hear from you. Um, however, I am running out of time. So uh, I take the last uh, 15, 20 seconds to really thank everyone in it to make SF Python magical and special. Um, all the people that were nominated before, um, you know, thank you so much for being there for us and, you know, you really make this community amazing. <laughs>